probably put a sticker on it for me, so that's wonderful. All right, so August 11th, the Ladies Fellowship is at 6 o'clock. Uh, August 15th, the Men's Fellowship, um, 6 o'clock. Uh, August 28th, uh, it's Family Fun Night at 4 o'clock. And um, this upcoming Sunday is our uh, Prove God campaign. Our offering is at over uh, 3,600, and we have, uh, well, you have till this Sunday to reach our goal, so just keep um, praying about that. Uh, so we'll go over the prayer request, um, the list here. I know that there was one given out. Some of them may be from uh, last week. But is there any new ones that we need to add to the prayer list? I think, uh, I'm, they'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Brother Ed has an appointment August 9th, I think. So uh, just keep remembering that. Remember Brother Jesse and them as they uh, make their way back and the Wallaces, and all of them that's in Florida. Uh, just remember all of them as they're uh, making their way back this weekend. Brother Benny, yeah, pray for him. He fell off a trailer Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that's right he does uh, so pray for him uh, that's terrible um, so alright if um, there's yes Um, and also, what's that? What's that family's name down in Lagrange? The Huey family. There's a family down in Lagrange. The Huey family. Um, my in-laws used to uh, be a part of a church down there, and I think it's her, the pastor's daughter-in-law, her nephew. He was 15, and he got in an ATV accident and died. So um, just remember, it's the Huey family. Um, he passed away. So just remember that family. Yeah. Remember all the uh, ones that's on here that are sick. That, am I missing anything? Okay. All right. Well, we're all, if anybody that's able will come down here and we'll have a time of uh, prayer for before uh, Brother Clark comes around to preach for us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this uh, day, Lord. I thank you for the week, God, that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for just another opportunity, Lord, that we get, God, to um, come and come into your house, Lord. And uh, Lord, for just a little while, pray and just talk to you for just a little bit. And God, I, I, and, and just another opportunity, Lord, to, to hear from you, another opportunity to um, receive a, a message from your word, God, Lord, I uh, I thank you for everyone that's came here tonight, God. I pray, especially out in this weather, Lord, I um, thank you for that. And, Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, I pray for all the, the sick and everyone that is on our prayer list, God, Lord, the many um, uh, sick that's on here, many appointments that are coming up. And, Lord, you know each and every one. Lord, you know each and every situation. Lord, you know um, each and every appointment, God. And, Lord, I thank you. I'm thankful, Lord, that, uh, Lord, we can pray to a God who knows and a God who cares. And, uh, Lord, I'm thankful, Lord, for the ability that we get to come and pray to you, Lord. And, um, Lord, and all that is possible because of, of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you for that. And, uh, Lord, we pray and we ask you tonight that, Lord, that you would just forgive us 
of our sins, God, Lord, there wouldn't be any hindrances, Lord, in, in the way, God. I pray, Lord, that we would open our hearts and open our minds and be ready to receive, uh, Lord, uh, the, the word of God and, uh, Lord, your word. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that it would uh, make a difference in our lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would leave differently, uh, Lord, than the way that we came here tonight. And, God, I pray that you would uh, touch Brother Clark as he stands to preach. I pray that you would just... Uh, touch him, give him power, Lord, give him um, uh, a clear mind, God. I pray that you would just touch his speech, God, just help him to speak clearly, Lord. I pray that you would just um, give him power, Lord, to preach. And uh, Lord, I pray, God, that we would open our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. I pray for Brother Jesse and um, the Wallace family and all the ones that are down, Lord, on vacation. I pray that you would just continue to give them a good rest and um, a good break. And God, I pray, Lord, that you'd keep them safe. Uh, Lord, on their, uh, in their travels on the way back, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we would come ready, Lord, on Sunday to just um, worship you and God and, and, and learn more about you, and uh, Lord, we ask you, we ask all these things, Lord, in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. sing and then uh, Brother Clark when she gets done of course uh, I was uh, just a kid not to make Brother Clark feel old but I was just a boy at Peachtree Road when Brother Clark was a teenager so uh, <laughs> we know a little bit about each other so <clears throat> Does Jesus care when my heart is pained to deeply for mirth and song as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long oh,
Amen. And uh, thank the Lord. Let me get this thing on here. Amen. Brother Austin, he gave me good instructions on how to use this thing. Amen. He did a good job. Brother Austin's doing a good job, isn't he? Five dollars after church, Brother Austin. I, I said it. Amen. And uh, he deserves a raise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It could be saved. Say amen. If you're saved, say amen. How about that? Amen. amen. Good. I tell you, not only does we, do we know just based on a good song that we know Jesus cares and it's the character of God to care about his people, uh, but the Bible also tells us he cares. Amen. amen. You know, everything we know about God, we learn it from the word of God. And uh, the Bible tells in 1 Peter 5, uh, verse 7, it talks about how we cast all our cares on him no, he, because he cares for us. He cares for us. Amen. And I'm thankful for that truth tonight, amen. And if you have your Bible, I hope you do. I hope you brought your Bible. And let's go to 1 Corinthians tonight, chapter number 16. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, and it's an honor to be here with you tonight. Um, Brother Jesse is a dear friend of mine, and really he is. We go back, and I know I've been here before, but uh, me and Brother Jesse, we, we went to uh, school together, Bible college together, and uh, uh, really the Lord just knit our hearts there and uh, had, a, had a unique group of guys there that just sort of banded together and uh, became brothers, amen, really is how I feel, I feel like, I really feel like Brother Jesse is not just a brother in Christ, but I feel like he's a brother to me, amen, he's just that kind of fella, and just, uh, he's the kind of guy, and he'll probably, I don't know if he'll watch, come back and watch this or not, but he really, he'll, he'll know this to be true, he's the kind of guy we could go a couple months and not even speak, and then you come back around, talk to him, and it's like, hey, how's that going, you know, and he's checking on you and things, but I love your pastor and your pastor's wife, is just doing the kids, man, you got a good, got a good preacher here, amen. And don't take them for granted and just love on them and do what you can. He didn't, he didn't tell me to say none of that, uh, but I'm going to say it, amen. You got a good one, amen. And let me say a word, too, about Brother Strickland. I love Brother Ed Strickland, amen. And uh, All right, I do. And I didn't get any, brother, if Brother Ed watches, I didn't get any amens when I said that, amen. But <laughs> I do sure do love Brother Ed. In fact, uh, just give you a brief just a couple minutes here and we'll get into the text. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians 16, if I didn't say that already, but um, but uh, Brother Ed has been a blessing here as of late. Uh, he is, uh, I, the Lord laid it on my heart uh, a couple weeks back, a few weeks back, uh, to resign the church that I pastored for six years. And so I was uh, down in Eatonton, Georgia, and the Lord just, uh, just as clear as I'm standing here, the Lord dealt with my heart about resigning. And uh, that some people understand that, some people don't. I don't expect everyone to understand that maybe, but I know what the Lord told me to do. So uh, we tried to just step out on faith and obey the Lord and, and during this time, you know, that's been a couple weeks back now, and, uh, and Brother Ed has uh, graciously just, I called him, and just uh, knowing he was in the capacity he was in here, you know, not preaching every week, and I said, Brother Ed, would you be able to maybe to come down for a couple weeks, while, you know, in this transition to our place and just help our people, you know, just preach to them, and uh, you've been in the ministry a long time, I feel like, I told him, I said, I really feel like you could help them. And uh, he graciously, graciously accepted to do that for a couple weeks back. And I, I, I appreciate his heart to try to help people. Amen. Uh, Brother Ed Strickland is a man who I feel like he'll try to help you any way he can. And that means a lot. And I thank the Lord for him. So you got a good legacy here. And you got a good man of God here now. And, man, the Lord's just really done a great work. Amen. Uh, I don't know how many have been saved since January. I, Brother Ed was talking, uh, mentioning it one time. And I forget the numbers. But, man, the Lord's really uh, stirring some hearts around here. Amen. And uh, you ought to be thankful for that. Because let me say this. That's not happening everywhere, amen, and uh, it's not happening everywhere, things aren't going on, you know, you, sometimes you go into a place and it's almost like you're looking for the casket, you know, you're looking for where is it at, you know, uh, you're looking for the funeral home director because you feel like you walked in a funeral, and let me say this, churches should not be that way, amen, now I know there's times where you have a heavy heart, I mean, that's everybody, amen, there's times where you're going to feel like not even crawl, you crawl through the back door when you get here on a Wednesday night, I understand that, but but understand, we have heaven to gain, amen? And uh, we ought not uh, be walking around too low, you know? I mean, look, we're going to heaven when we die if we're saved. And, uh, man, I tell you, uh, the weight of life and the weight of this world is, is pretty tough. But let me say this, Jesus is better than all that, amen? And so I know it may, you may have had a rough day today. You may have been working out in some weather or whatever, traffic. Man, I tell you, uh, anywhere around Athens, man, God bless you, Amen. <laughs> I tell you right now, it's bad, but, uh, but I'm thankful you're here tonight. I want to just try to be a help to you. I really just, I was honored that Brother Jesse asked me to, to come and just fill in, and I just appreciate that. And by the way, if you didn't get invited on the vacation, 
Man, I've got a bunch of them are gone, amen. And so that's the, I guess, who's the in, are y'all the in crowd or are they, amen? Uh, no, I'm kidding, amen. But whoever's gone, I know there's several familiar faces I don't see tonight. I'm sure they're traveling or sick. And you mentioned the man that fell off the trailer. That's Brother Benny, and I remember Brother Benny, yeah, and I hope he's all right, amen. And so a uh, lot to pray for, a lot of folks to be checking on. So it is a blessing to be here tonight. First Corinthians uh, chapter number 16, we're going to start reading uh, in verse number, let's uh, see here. Let's start reading down in verse number 13. The Bible says this, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Now I'm not necessarily, uh, I'm just kind of reading a couple verses in the context tonight. I'm going to loosen this a little bit. Um, but the Bible says let all things be done with charity. Uh, you say, what is charity? You know that. This, and by the way, this is Wednesday night. I'm going to go a little bit, a little slower, just trying to make sure we get what the Lord has for us tonight. Um, but charity is love, amen? It, you know, that means we're supposed to love one another. That means we're supposed to do all things with that love in our heart. That, and let me say this, uh, everything Christ did, he, he did it because he loved the church, loved the people. He loved, he loved the world, the Bible says, amen? And so the Bible tells, so when you think about things in your life that, man, how can I do this? How should I do this? Think about uh, loving that sinner and doing what God's called you to do because of the love you have in your heart for the Lord and the, all the love we're supposed to have for this old dying, lost and dying world. Amen. I don't love the world, I, but I tell you what, I sure do. I don't want anybody in the world to die and go to hell. Amen. And I, I just, I'm challenged when I read that verse 14. But the Bible says in verse number 15, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. I, I want to use that tonight. I want to look at that, and that's going to be kind of one of the text verses down to verse 18. The Bible says that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth uh, with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and, Fort and uh, Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. So for tonight, that's where we're going to kind of bring the message from. But I want to look at that phrase that was in verse number 15. It said that, talking about the house of Stephanus, it said that they have addicted themselves to the ministry. And I want to preach just for a few minutes tonight. Brother Austin said, Brother Jesse, you normally goes till 9 o'clock. And so we'll, uh, we, you know, we'll get it all in. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, we're going to be mindful of your time tonight with this weather and all this too. But uh, I want to preach on the simple thought tonight, addicted to the ministry, addicted to the ministry. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Uh, God, we thank you. Lord, that you uh, Lord, would die for us. Lord, that you gave your life. Uh, Lord, that you love us, God, that you care for us, God. You've helped us tonight even in the songs, and we're thankful for that. And Lord, I pray tonight for the pastor here, God, that you would just uh, touch him, use him, Lord, in a special way, Lord, that uh, in this church, God, that you'd bless this church, God, and this community, or that you'd raise up a great place, God, that I uh, would honor and glorify you in everything that's done, God. And I pray, God, that you'd be with those that are traveling, Lord, that you would bring them back safely, refreshed, and ready to uh, serve you, God. And I pray for those that are sick and unable to come. And uh, God, I just ask you to be with us tonight and touch our hearts and speak to us in Jesus' name, amen. It's interesting as you look at this chapter, and I'll just outline it quickly just for some, for some that take notes and kind of want to go back and study things. And if you look at verse 1, and verse, Paul, by the way, we know Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. We know that. The church at Corinth was a young church as far as you all of young people. And unfortunately, a lot of times with young people, it a lot of times breeds a lot of inexperience and, and, and novice type situations, I guess you'd say, that... Uh, that basically that Paul had to do a lot of dealing with the church at Corinth. It was a very carnal church. Now, we throw off on them a lot of times because of that. But understand this, I believe the church at Corinth was, uh, there was a lot of reasons for that. But one of those reasons was simply there was a lot, of, it, was a, it was an epicenter. It was a place of travel. It was a place that was uh, a lot of different types of people. And when people would get in the church, boy, they, uh, sometimes they'd have a lot of baggage, amen. And let me just say this. I think it's good to have people in your church every now and again that, hey, they look like they just got out of the world, amen. 
Uh, I, don't, I don't think it ought to be a church necessarily. It's, all, it's not all about just being some kind of museum where people can say uh, some relics from the past, amen. And uh, I think it ought to be some new Christians sitting around sometimes or some young families that maybe don't have it all together. And I'm not, I'm not giving that an okay tonight, you understand. But I do think it's a, a signs of a growing church to have some people at different levels. And, and I believe you've got that around here, especially in recent days, that God's sort of doing a work and seeing people saved and people seeing people grow in the Lord. And so it's important, that's important. But the church of Corinth had a lot of problems, and he was he was dealing with some things in this chapter. In fact, they were worthy of two different letters, amen. And so, uh, but but in, in chapter number sixteen, that he breaks it down. He start to break it down for you in outline form. It will help you study it. In verse one and two, you see he he deals with the collection. Paul deals with this church and talks to them about how they are to take up the offerings and how they are to distribute and how they are to manage that. That's pretty important for a church to do, amen? That's pretty important. So he was dealing with the collection. Then he dealt in verse 3 down through verse 9 with the coming. He talked about how... Uh, he says, when I come, he talks about when Paul is coming, he shall approve the letters I will send to them, bring it at the liberty of, unto Jerusalem. And he said, I will meet thee also. He saw, he, so he mentions to him, hey, I'm going to come down there. I'm going to visit with you. And then he goes down and talks about the companions. In verse 10 down through verse 12, he says, now if Timotheus come, uh, see that he may be with you without fear, that for he worketh uh, the work of the Lord, as I also do. So he talks about there's other people that are going to be coming that are on the same team. Aren't you glad tonight that we have some people and not everybody's an enemy somebody say amen not everybody's at odds with everything where you're doing tonight there are some people now it's getting fewer and far between probably but I'm glad to know there's some companions down the road that are hey they're having midweek service tonight they're breaking open the Bible they're doing the kids things and the, and the, and the singing the songs of Zion I'm thankful for the companions that we have Paul was wanting them to make sure that you don't have to be in fact he begins to deal with it uh, about being a, a, I'm a, 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 a Paulus I'm a this one I'm that one. He talks about that in other places, and he talks about how not everybody has to be in a faction. Amen. We draw our circles sometimes, don't we? We say, well, this is my crowd. Amen. Well, sometimes that, that hinders us in the work of God, and we think, well, if they're not in my circle or exactly like me, then they can't be right. I, listen, I, I'm as doctrinal as they come. I think you ought to line up doctrinally. Somebody say, amen. Doctrine's pretty important. Amen. Uh, but understand tonight that God is interested. It's not a, you're not on an island by yourself tonight, amen. Elijah thought that sitting under the juniper tree. I'm the only one. I'm the only one down here, and, and nobody else can do it, you know, and I'm the only one God's got. You're not the only one, and there's others that are struggling. There's others that are working, and he talks about those companions. Then there's that challenge in verse 13. Here's the challenge that Paul gives this church. He says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Now, he's telling them to stand fast in the faith because they no doubt were weak, and he knew their times were coming where they were going to have to stand for what they believed. What a challenge that we need in 2022 tonight, amen? To stand fast in the faith. And he says, quit you like men. Quit you like men. He's saying this. Here it is. I heard a preacher preach on one time. He used that verse. He said, preached on man up, amen? I believe we're living in that day where we have to man up if we're going to be a Christian, Amen. Uh, or you women, you woman up, woman up, amen, however you want to say it, amen. Uh, but understand, I think there's, we're in a day where you have to uh, get to the place where you're going to have to, you can't just be a Christian halfway, half in, half out. Got, hey, listen, I don't, I don't think God's interested in us being on the fence on everything we do, amen. Uh, listen, I think we ought to love sinners, but understand, I thought we have to be uncompromising when it comes to the Word of God, amen uncompromising when it comes to the things of God. There's some things that, hey, the world would have you see gray only or black. Uh, you know, they, they're not interested. They, they want to just have a gray area where nobody's wrong or nothing's wrong. God's not interested in that. God says, choose you this day. Amen. He, he, he wants us to make his as a choice. So he deals with that challenge in verse uh, 13 and 14. He says, let all things be done. That's a challenge to our heart. Let all things be done with charity. That's, hey, man, that's, that's, that's saying don't do what you do out of duty. Do it because you love. Amen. So then he deals with the church member. And that's what we're going to deal with in a minute. And then he gives the closing. But that church member, died, he's, he, he spoke of this church, or this, this family rather, the house of Stephanus. And that's really what I want to deal with tonight. The first thing I want you to notice is the character. What does it mean to be addicted to something? Now, in our language, in our term, we don't ever talk about somebody being, I mean, when we think about addicted, we think, I mean, obviously, I don't know if your mind does, but my mind obviously goes to uh, some type of substance abuse or some type of, that's immediately what I go to. But the word addiction, and he, he said that these people, this family, was addicted themselves to the ministry. 
They were addicted to the things of God. When someone is naturally, when we think about the word addiction, we think about their inability to stop. Their inability to stop. They cannot be stopped. Somebody who's addicted, it takes a long time to break that addiction. You know why? Because they are constantly, how many of you know somebody on, on to, and let's just be honest, when we think about addiction, a lot of times it's a negative thing. How many of you know somebody who's battling some type of addiction tonight? All right. We know people, or you know of someone, or maybe in the past has or is tonight, and that addiction, if they're not careful, especially with this type of things like drugs and alcohol and things, you get addicted to that stuff, and it's almost like, it's like they got to have it. I want you to think about that kind of drive in somebody with a substance abuse. And he described this house as somebody who's addicted to the ministry. Now, being addicted to the drugs or alcohol, that's awful. But I'd say tonight being addicted to the ministry sounds like a pretty positive thing, amen? With that same type, their inability to be stopped. It talks about, now somebody who's addicted, I, I, I didn't have to do a whole lot of reading on this. I just know this to be true based on folks I know, and I'm sure you do as well. When someone is addicted to something, here's a few things that are, that are, that are characteristics of that. There are changes in their mood. Amen. Their mood changes because they're addicted to something. They're not happy unless they have, unless they have whatever it is they're addicted to. Is that right? Y'all talk to me tonight. Honey. Amen. They're addicted to it. Their mood changes. They're not happy unless they're doing it. Can I say tonight a Christian is not happy unless they're serving the Lord? I me mean, tell you, the most miserable person in this world is somebody who's saved who's not doing what God wants them to do. They're mood, they're, it's almost like a spirit. They're moody. You know, they're, they're not happy. You can't get a joy. You can't get a smile at them. And why? Because they're not doing what God wants them to do. So, But somebody, they're changing mood. How about this? When someone's addicted to something, there's a change in their appetite. They can go without eating. Some of these drugs out there, as long as they're getting their drug, they can go without food. Their appetite, they're not hungry for the things they need to have. They're hungry for whatever it is, that addiction. I'm t- you say, what is that? That's this idea of when we talk about being addicted to the ministry, addicted to the things of God, what we're talking about is this idea you'll do without other worldly things to make sure that that ministry is what it needs to be. Let me say tonight, we were missing that in our churches, amen. And I'm not picking on this church, it's a great church, amen. But as a whole tonight, we're missing this idea of that hunger and thirst after righteousness that the Bible talks about. We want to be able to come in, and I'm again, I just I just talk in generals here, but we want to be able to come in and enjoy the presence of God, but we don't want to do nothing for it through the week. Amen. You say, preacher, what do we got to do to enjoy the presence of God on Sunday? Well, here's the start. Live for God Monday through Friday. You might enjoy Sunday a little more. Amen. Understand it, it's this hungering, it's this thirsting after righteousness. And so there's an appetite change in someone who's addicted. When you get yourself to the place with the Lord, you say, Lord, I want to serve. Lord, I want to do more. And that becomes the most important thing in your life is serving the Lord. Changes in their sleep, amen. That's a pretty, pretty good one, I think. Somebody who's addicted to something, man. I, I knew a man one time. He actually wasn't too far from here. Amen. I'm not going to call his name i got to be careful in these parts of the country, amen. I know some people around here. You can't call names. I knew a man one time. He, I grew up and helped a man do a little bit of work. and I got to, I'm getting detailed there. I keep going. See, I get to tell you a little more, a little more. He did a little work for him. And anyway, he was addicted to some, some, oh, an awful drug. And I remember him talking about it. He, and he, well, he wasn't at the time, but I remember him talking, telling me about the time he was, he was going on this addiction. And he said, he said, he said Clark, he said, Brother Clark, he said, I'll, I can, if I'm on that drug, I'll go three or four days and I won't even sleep. He said, back in those days, I, as long as I took that, I couldn't sleep. And I'm like, brother, it changes your sleep patterns. But spiritually speaking, when we're, not, when we're addicted to other things and not addicted to the ministry, we, hey, we spiritually can go to sleep. We can spiritually do without the, 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 the very thing. We can, we can, it alters the sleep patterns. It alters the rest time. And let me say this. When you're fulfilling all the things in life and you're going after those things to fulfill what God's done in your heart and you're not, you're not reading the Word of God, you're not praying, you're not serving the Lord, then there's something about it begins to get you in a place where you can go to sleep spiritually. Amen? And, you don't, and by the way, you can't enjoy the rest like you can when you're right with God either. Amen? You can't enjoy the rest. So I say tonight, that's just some simple uh, comparisons with that which was, uh, that when we talk about addiction. And let me say this about that. People that are addicted to, the, to other things that are talking about drugs and things of that nature, I wrote this down. They're continuing despite consequences. 
Let me say tonight, and you say, well, that sounds like an awful thing. Well, if we flip that around, we're talking about a ministry tonight. You'll say, hey, I don't care what it's going to cost me. I want to serve the Lord. I don't care what it's going to have. I'm going to go after God. And let me say this. You'll never be disappointed following Jesus. The world would have you think you're missing out tonight. I don't know what's going on. You know, people, I, don't know what, I don't know what comes on on TV on Wednesday night about 7. I have no idea. Amen. But, you know, there's some, whatever it is, some people sit at home and they'd, they'd rather watch that than come to the house of God. I'm telling you, friend, you'll, you don't know what you're missing, hey, amen. You don't know what's going on. Hey, people spend their Sundays on where I pastor. People spend their Sundays on the lake, hey, amen. I tell you, they don't know what they're missing. They think they're living it up. But I'm going to tell you something. We're going to get to heaven one day. We're going to find out that all that was just vain, hey, amen. All that was just wasted. But let's look at this house of Stephanus tonight. And I'll try to just be a, be a simple help to you. Number one, I notice in verse number 15, we see the family of Stephanus. Notice what it says. I beseech you, brethren... Ye know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, that may, they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So we see that the first thing is he wanted, that Paul wanted this church to acknowledge this, this, the house of Stephanus. He wanted to acknowledge this family that was in this church. He wanted you to take note and take notice. Uh, he didn't name a bunch of other families in the church, but he did name the house of Stephanus. And so it tells us tonight as Christians trying to gain from the word of God, what is it about the house of Stephanus that we all need to take note of tonight? The first thing I'll say about him is they were, we can see this in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, they were a converted family. This was the family that Paul had led to the Lord. This is a family that had gotten saved and had become, the Bible says, the first fruits, meaning this. They were the first, one of the first groups uh, that was down there around that church that got in, that got saved, and there was something about them that Paul wanted us to know and the Lord wants us to know, and it's very important. How do you become addicted to the ministry? I want to serve, I want to serve the Lord. I want to do this. I want to do that. Where does it start? It starts with getting born again, amen? There's a lot of people in churches today, they're trying to serve God. They don't know God, amen? Uh, listen tonight, if you want to serve the Lord, you got to get saved, amen? You can't just turn over new leaves and start showing up to church and start driving a bus. All those are good things tonight, but listen, it starts with being saved. It starts with being born again. If your walk with God, listen to me tonight, I'm not trying to discourage you from doing anything. I'm trying to encourage you. But if your walk with God tonight didn't start, I'm talking about your walk with God. If it didn't start with getting saved, it didn't start right, Amen? If it just started, when you just started kind of blending in, then, friend, listen, that's not salvation. Amen. Understand, if you're going to be in heaven one day, it's going to be because you trusted the blood of Jesus Christ and got your sins under the blood and asked him to forgive you. Listen, that's Bible salvation. You must be born again. It's a, he, was a, he wanted you to acknowledge his family. Uh, he wanted to, uh, of us to know this was a converted family. In 1 Corinthians 1, uh, verse 16, excuse me, I said 10 earlier. 1 Corinthians 1, 16 says, talks about how when they got saved and when they, they got added to the church. But then we say this, they were also, not only he wanted to notice their conversion, but he wanted us to notice they were a committed family. Let me just say this tonight. Commitment has become slowly a thing of the past in the church. Amen. I tell people, say amen or oh me. It's one or the other. <laughs> Commitment has become a thing of the past. I pastored for six years, and Lord willing, we're just praying about what the Lord wants us to do next. I still have a great heart to pastor, just praying about what God... I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm just standing by saying, God, tell me my orders, amen? I'm just waiting, amen? But I pastored long enough to tell you that not everybody that I pastored was committed. And I'm not picking on the church. That's any church in America would be that way. I wonder tonight, I don't know hardly anybody. I just see some faces, but... I'm wondering who in this, in this very room tonight would say, Preacher, I'm considered a committed church member. Now, this is a Wednesday night, amen. This is a Wednesday night when your pastor wasn't here, amen. This is a Wednesday night when Brother So-and-so wasn't here, and you're still here, amen. I'd say this pretty committed bunch right here, amen. Maybe you didn't know it. Maybe you forgot on your way to church. You pulled in and thought, oh, yeah, the pastor's out of town. I could have went somewhere else. Oh, man, what happened, amen. You forgot. But they were a converted family. They were committed let me say this, uh, no commitment means no accountability. People are not running from a commitment. They'll be committed to a ball team, listen. They're committed to a, 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 a fishing trips, amen. They're committed to tournaments, they're committed to this, they're committed, they'll commit, it, they commit on their job, amen, or they won't get paid. <laughs> How many of you know that, amen? <laughs> you say you got to be, hey, you got to be there Monday morning, hey, or tomorrow morning, you got to be on the job. You Why? Because you're committed. But somehow church has become something that's not 
that way for us. I'm not picking on nobody here. I'm just simply telling you it is easy to, to want to just slide in and slide out and not be committed. But this kind of family that Paul wanted us to take notice of, they were committed. They were there. They were involved. They were committed. And by the way, you don't get committed by accident. Well, I don't know what happened, preacher. I just started, I bumbled in one day to the church, and all of a sudden I started this and that and this. I have no idea. No, you got committed because you wanted to be committed. Amen. You got committed because you liked what was going on around the house of God. You wanted to be a blessing to those that God was using. You were trying to do something. A committed Christian is somebody who just simply, it's not, it doesn't mean that you've got it all together. It just means, hey, you can count on me. Amen. Let me ask you a, a very practical question tonight. And Can you be counted on? This, and I'm just curious. I, again, I'm coming out of pastor mode. So I, I, sometimes I do a little, I don't mean to pastor when I'm guest preaching or nothing like that. But I'm just saying, it's hard because... I wonder tonight if Brother Jesse came in, if he'd kind of look over the crowd and would, he, would, would you, you know, hey, would you be one that would he be shocked if you were here tonight because you don't normally come? Or would it be something where on a Sunday night or something rolls around and he said, no, there's so-and-so, they're in their place. They're there. They're committed. We need more commitments, amen? The world is, is running from commitments. Nobody wants commitments because commitments equals accountability and commitments equals responsibility. You see, the house of Stephanus could be used in the church of Corinth, and here's why, because they were there. If you want to be used around Grace Baptist Church, I'll tell you one step might be show up. And I know I'm probably preaching to a choir, and I know that. But you understand. You can't use people if they don't show up. You can't do, I'd like to teach a Sunday school. I'd like to do this. I'd like to see this. But, if you, but that commitment is what, a lot of times what God's looking for. He says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. We, I often think about, look, and a lot of times it's, it's this idea that we think we got to go the whole way. Really, God's just looking for a small step of faith sometimes, amen? He's looking for us, hey, Lord, I, Lord, here am I, send me kind of attitude, amen? You ain't got to figure it all out, but hey, Lord, here am I, I'll, I'll commit, I'll be here, I'll give to the project, I'll, I'll be a part of the outreach, I'll be at the men's meeting, I'll be there, I'm just going to be committed. And I promise you this, you get committed to the house of God God will start using you. Committed. Not only that, they were a converted family, a committed family. But here it is, simply this, they were a church family. They were, part, they were part of the church. They were a part of the greatest thing that God left behind. That is the church, the bride of Christ. Amen. I've said this oftentimes, but did you know what we have in here tonight? I know it ain't much looking up here, I promise you. Amen. But what we're doing tonight, listen to me. This is as close as you're going to get to heaven. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, God's people bearing one another's burdens here together, rejoicing, singing the songs of Zion around God's word. What more do we get until we get to heaven? You have a church. You've got a church family. You've got fellowship one with another. You've got a, uh, somebody who gets up week in and weeks out and prays and, and gets with God and gives you the word of God and you've got people to eat with and fellowship with and your families to grow with. Man, this is an amazing thing what God's left behind to call the church. Amen. And the greatest thing of all is the groom's coming to get the bride one day. Amen. He's coming to get us. God left behind this thing called the church. And so many people don't take advantage really of what goes on at the house of God. I, I, I Listen, I love the house of God. I love the church tonight. My church changed my life. It changed everything. I love the church. But we talk about the acknowledge of the family, the addiction of the family. They were addicted, devoted, dedicated. It was habit forming. They had affection of this family. The Bible says that they had a ministry. What were they addicted to? The ministry, the Bible says in verse number 15, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now listen to me. That was not some unique ministry, but that ministry was labeled a little bit called the ministry of the saints. Meaning this, this wasn't just some personal, uh, you, know, uh, you know, brother uh, Stephanus' uh, you know, family ministries. You know, <laughs> that's not what it was. Yeah, amen. I'm not against you use that name, whatever you want to do. But, but I'll tell you what this was. This was a family in the church that had gotten saved that decided to give everything they had to the saints. Now, who are the saints? Those are believers. They were part of the church. Here was a family that the house of Stephanus didn't preach any revivals. If God's got you doing that, praise God. Amen. The house of Stephanus didn't do this, this, and this. But we read about them in the Bible because they gave themselves 
to what was going on at the house of God. Now let me challenge you something tonight. You may not be a preacher. You may not be uh, you know, a Sunday school teacher. But you can be that kind of Christian. You can give yourself... And I didn't say, preacher, you're talking about a place. He's not. No, listen, we're talking about the church of Corinth. Paul was dealing specifically with this church. So we can apply this specifically to our local church, to your local church. It's okay to do it. I know we thought, well, preacher, I serve the Lord. I do all kinds of things. I understand. But the house of Stephanus was known for what they did at the house of God. Amen. The question I have for you tonight is, what can you do more for God through your local church? There's somewhere something you can do and, and a blessing you can be. They had the affection of this thing. What, did they, what was their affection? They weren't trying to build a big name for themselves. They weren't trying to do something great over here. But they were simply just trying to say, hey, I'm going to love on those people down there at the church. They had affection. They had a ministry for the saints. When people thought about the house of Stephanus, they thought, man, you know, there's a, there's a family that, that loves the church. Let me just say this as a side note. Don't let anybody talk bad about your church. Amen. Don't let anybody talk bad about your preacher. Listen, I, listen. if they don't want to talk bad about your preacher, then say, hey, go, then go on, especially somebody in the church. Amen. But even people outside, I'd say, well, you ain't a member. Don't worry about it. Amen. There's a million churches to go to. You don't like my preacher? Go somewhere else. Amen. Because you, you say, well, preacher, I want people to be here. Listen, I don't want anybody to be here that's going to be a hindrance to the pastor. Amen. I, people, tell, people sacrifice a crowd to, for the, on the altar of, you know, to, on this idea of, well, we're going to you know, get, a, get a house full of people, but they, they, the preacher can't say that. Let me tell you something. If they don't love Brother Jesse, they don't need to be a member here. They can come in and hear the gospel all they want, but they don't need to be a member. So I, Brother Jesse's going to get on me for saying things like that. But the house of Stephanus tonight, listen, they were known for what they did for other Christians. Let me ask you a question tonight. Is your Christian life all about you or is it all about trying to be a blessing somewhere else? Now, we all struggle with that. If we're not careful, when we think about what can church, what can the church do for us mentality, that's a lot of our opinions sometimes. What's the church got going on for mine? What's the, I, 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 I got to be careful, but I used to hear things like that all the time. Well, well, you know, what are we going to do for me and my, you know, it ain't about you. Amen. When you come to the house of God, you're going to gain some benefits. But you need to come with the idea of saying, hey, what can I do this weekend to make the house of God a little bit better for the pastor and for the Lord moving and for God doing things at, our, at the church? What can I do to sign up and say, hey, I want to do more. I want to be a blessing. Because the house of Stephanus, they were just really concerned about the other saints there. And not only that, we find they were also concerned about Paul. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But we see the family of Stephanus. And number two, quickly, we see the faithfulness of Stephanus. I cannot preach and say enough tonight on the idea of being faithful. Now, we talked about commitment. Sometimes you can make a commitment and fail that, amen? You can let him down, let folks down. and that, that, That's what we all do that. But the Bible says, moreover, is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I mean, that's a pretty stern scripture when you think about it. Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. In other words, that's a, God puts a premium on faithfulness. He wants you to be faithful. Faithful to what? I would say faithful to all kinds of things. But how about how, how often do you how often do you pray for the folks in the house of God? I, please, I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to pick on anybody or, or I just try to challenge us a little bit tonight, but don't let that be something just you read over five minutes before prayer time. I don't know what's all on here. I see a lot of things on here though. And it might be good to go home and, and I'm sure some of you may be doing this. I hope you are. I know Brother Jesse would want you to is to break this thing down and pray every week and every day for the things going on at the house of God. Because when you begin to pray for others, guess what? It becomes less about you and more about what's going, what's going on in somebody else's life. Amen. The faithfulness of Stephanus. In verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, that ye submit yourselves unto such to everyone that helpeth us and laboreth. He said, I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunus and Achaeus, for at which... Uh, for that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. Do you know what he said there? He's basically saying when these guys came in, the house, when they came in to this church, they met a need here that was not being met. Did you know tonight that there's a need that you can meet at Grace Baptist Church that only you can meet that need? God's got you here to meet that need. Amen. You say, preacher, we mean God's got to have me? No, God will bring somebody else in to, to fulfill that need. But understand, you, hey, I want in on serving the Lord, amen? amen? 
God's got, now you're not a part of this thing by accident. There's somewhere, a pocket somewhere in this church where you can do something. And I guarantee you, Brother Jesse would help you find it. Amen. The faithfulness. They were an example of submission. Not their will. The house of Stephanus didn't say, oh yeah, we'll, be, we'll serve as long as we can be. Give us a title. Well, that wasn't why they were serving. They were serving, I believe, no doubt, because number one, they, they loved the church, but they, they, have, they were very devoted to Paul. And they knew Paul loved them. They knew uh, Paul wanted to see them grow. And they, they wanted to be a part of the work of God. And, and here it was. They had opportunity to serve, had opportunity to be a part. And they were an example to us tonight of submission, of submitting to his will and not ours. Sometimes his will doesn't line up with what we want. Sometimes it, we find out that it ain't what we thought it was going to be. But we ought to be thankful that God, has just, that God would even use us at all. Amen. We're nothing compared to, I mean, listen, there's other people that are more qualified tonight, more, more prepared, more this, more that. But I'm going to say something. It's just an honor tonight to stand up here and preach. Amen. It was an example of submission. It was an example of supply. God used them to be a blessing around the church. Did you know, very simply, that God can use you to be a blessing to somebody else around this church? Maybe it's the preacher. Maybe it's somebody. Maybe it's one of these bus kids coming on in. Amen. And these kids come in from different walks of life, different their families and all these things going. We all know that. But you could be somebody who could say, hey, there's somebody God touched my heart about. I want to be a blessing to them. You say, well, I can't give them no money. They, hey, I, I learned this several years ago. You get more encouragement out of a card, handwritten card, than you do money sometimes. Most times, I'll just be honest with you. You say, preacher, the Lord's burdened my heart about somebody. What should I do? Write them a note. Amen. Let them know you love them. Let them know you care. Now, I know that sounds, that, that means we've got to do something, amen. But hey, how about being sensitive to the Lord and saying, hey, I want to encourage somebody. I want to, I, want to be a, I want to help the saints. How can I do that? There's a lot of ways you can help the saints, amen. Let me give you the last thing tonight. The family of Stephanus, the faithfulness of Stephanus, but then the fruit of Stephanus. Notice in verse number 18. Notice what it is. When they, when they came, here's what Paul said about it. Here's, the, here's a great verse about this family that ought to challenge all of us. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Are you a refreshment or are you a dehydrator? Amen. (laughs) Are you somebody who refreshes people's spirit or are you a burden on their spirit? Amen. Now that's probably not something we want to talk about out loud, but we just want to think about that for a minute. Do I, when I, when I'm around the church, am I a blessing or a burden? Now look. I heard a man say, I'm just a burden around here. And he was just kind of a, you're not a burden, but when in our own heart sometimes we feel like, am I, am I adding to or am I hurting the place? And by the way, if you feel like you're a burden or you feel like you're hurting something, it don't mean just go up and leave. It means, hey, turn, turn it around, amen, and be a blessing. The fruit of refreshment. He refresh, they were refreshing to the man of God. They were refreshing to the people of God. And it was refreshing, I believe, to the Spirit of God. Why? Because the Spirit of God can move when there's unity, when there's that kind of unity in a church. And he talks about unity in that very same chapter. He talks about the blessing of having it all, uh, being, a, being that unified body and being that, that group of people that can move forward. I preached on unity uh, several weeks back before I left, uh, resigned our church. And I'm going to tell you something. God can use people that are unified. Amen. But you got a bunch of rogues and renegades and rebels mixed in that trying to do their own thing. Hey, that's a recipe for it to fall apart, amen. amen. You like what God's doing around the house of God in the last few months at your church, amen? Well, go ahead and fan the flame, amen. amen. The fruit of refreshment. Then there's the fruit of reverence. Now, this isn't, I wanted to close with this very thought because the Bible says in verse 18, for they have refreshed my, my spirit and yours. So it affected those that are all around. I mean, Paul took notice that because of them, Y'all's church spirit has improved. Did you know you can have that kind of impact at your church? Let me, have, let me help you. Let me challenge you. Come in here Sunday morning just absolutely ready to worship God. Amen. I'm not saying foolishness, but I'm telling you, you come in and you come up to Brother Jesse and your, and you, or, or one of the leaders and you say, Brother Jesse, I'm praying for you. I love you. I'm saved. Hallelujah. And see what that will do to him. Man, and then when the choir gets up to sing, whatever they sing, I don't care if it's Mama's Bible or, or, or Granddad's Hangnail, I don't know what, it'll, what they're going to sing, but you ought to say, Glory to God. See, preach, that's foolish. I'm just simply telling you, the Bible says He inhabits the praise of His people. You come in with this attitude of gratitude and this idea that I'm going to praise the Lord no matter what's happening Monday, 
No matter what happened last week, I'm going to give everything to God because he gave it all to me. See, there's a spirit, there's a spirit that you can refresh. You say, what will that do? That might help the preacher Sunday morning. I, I guarantee this, it ain't going to hurt him. Amen. Amen's never hurt a preacher. Just remember that, okay? But I'll tell you what else it might do. Somebody across the pew, and maybe it's handshaking timers. It ain't got to be some, I'm not, I'm just picking on that really, but it could just be a smile during handshaking time. Say, hey, brother, how you doing? Man, it's so good to see you this morning. Man, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you've been coming to the church. Whatever you got to do to be an encouragement, you will affect the preacher, you will affect the, the, you'll affect the, the people, and you'll affect the Spirit of God around this place. Amen? It's hard to come into a church sometimes and have to pump the primer. I mean, you, how many of you guys know about tractors and, and different things? you got to pump that primer. Amen? And sometimes it's, you got 10 pumps. I mean, ten, times 10 it'll say. Amen? Or whatever. Understand, some, I'd like to go into church sometime and not have to hit the primer. Amen. The choir song, the, 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 the songs are too good. The message is too, uh, the songs are too good. The spirit's too, I mean, just everything's just too good. And by the time we're ready to close, we're about ready to have church. Amen. That's a challenge tonight. <laughs> Acknowledge them. Here's, the, here's what Paul told them to do about the, the people, the, or the house of Stabanus. Here's what Paul acknowledged the church to do. He said, I want you to acknowledge them in prayer. I want you to pray for it. You got people like that in your church? You ought to pray for them. Because the devil don't like people like that. The devil doesn't like the house of Stephanus. The devil will attack the house of Stephanus. Because the house of Stephanus is being a blessing to the pastor. The house of Stephanus is being a blessing around the church. And the devil's not going to sit by and let them people just serve and do all they want without putting some kind of fight up. So if you've, if you've got those kind of people around the church, pray for them. Not only that... I would say this, acknowledge them, but then Paul wants you to appreciate them. They, they, they ought to receive love from the brethren, amen? Man, maybe I, we had, uh, growing up in church, in our church, we had a lot of people in, you know Brother Richard Wait, you know remember Brother Richard? He, he was an encourager, man. He was the kind of guy to where no matter how, what, you could have the worst day in the world, I'm a 12-year-old boy walking in church, man, got in all kinds of trouble, cheated on a test, who knows what happened, I, my weekend's ruined, and brother, how you doing, boy? He's a Yankee man. He had the big, I mean, he'd know that's right, amen. This man would come in, bald-headed man, had a ha had pocket full of peppermints. What are you doing, boy? How you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Give me a peppermint. And that 12-year-old boy who thought the world was over, all of a sudden thought, man, Richard sure is loving God today. But he was always like that. Amen. That I saw him anyway. <laughs> he was a mechanic, so he was just glad to be out from under a car, I think, Amen. But you ought to appreciate those kinds. You know what? As an older person, I'm about to close. As an older person, I look back at those times now. I'm so grateful, though, for those kind of people in my church that I grew up in. And as a pastor, just a few years, I mean six years, I'm so grateful for people who just decided to be an encourager. Because when the day, you say, you, Brother Jesse will never get up. And he, and he, he ain't talking to me about no problems or nothing like that. So don't get that in your mind. But you don't know the weights of preachers in this day we're living. You don't understand, and I'm not being disrespectful, but you just won't, you can't, unless you've been there. You can't understand the weight of a Sunday night going home, worried to death about a family that's going the wrong way. You don't know what it's like to sit in a chair and be prepared to preach and look out, and that, fav and that family that you've been working on is just not there today. And then you don't know what it's like to have to deal with the issues that all pastors have, just, just issues. You know things about people you wish you didn't. Amen. It's a battle. It's a battlefield. And you need to pray for your preacher. And be an encourager. And I'm not just, that's not just for your preacher, but be an encourager for everybody you're around tonight. Amen. Appreciate them. And here it is. And the last thing I'll say, I believe this. We not only acknowledge them and appreciate them, but also with the House of Stephanus type people, you ought to... Uh, you ought to assist them. If you, hey, listen, find out what you can do. And I, I always felt guilty about somebody doing a bunch of, in fact, you know, around the house, somebody, you know, get to, you ever seen, been over to somebody's house and eating or something, and then they start doing a bunch of stuff, you almost feel obligated to say, hey, let me help you, you know. Well, at the house of God, sometimes we don't get that feeling. We see people serving, doing this, doing that. And hey, let me just help you. you. You see one of your leaders, I use Miss Kelly, a great pastor's wife. You see her running around like a chicken with her head cut off? Why don't you go up to her and say, Sister Kelly, how can I help you? Amen. Amen. I mean, you probably do that. Amen. That's good. Keep it up. Amen. You see things going on. You see something on a Sunday morning that's kind of, well, somebody needs to do that. Well, guess what? A job seen is a job found. Amen. 
how can you assist? Because when people decide that they don't have to be the chief, they can be an Indian, amen? Oh, God will do a lot of things in the house of God. But as long as you got to be in the limelight, amen? Our pastor, growing up preacher more, man, he... He, wasn't a, he, he, didn't, he didn't showcase the limelight. If you wanted to preach, you found a place somewhere to preach. We'd go down there in Lawrenceville and preach at the nursing homes, and, I mean, nobody ever mentioned it. But if you weren't preaching in the nursing homes, you weren't preaching Sunday night, as I guess, for 10 minutes or wherever. You, you just weren't going to do it. You know why? Because it's, he was more concerned with teaching us that you don't have to serve in the spotlight. If you've got to have a spotlight to serve, friend, find an altar somewhere. Because let me tell you something, there's no room for that here. There's no room for the spotlight. We don't, we don't have that kind of time. We don't have the, we're not trying to, and, I, and I, I don't want to be out of line here, but I know your pastor's hard. He's not, your pastor's not a spotlight seeker. Brother Jesse's not even, I mean, look, now, I know some preachers are different personalities, but Brother Jesse's personality is not to necessarily be up and, and have the spotlight and have his name on the sign everywhere you look either, amen? He's just a humble servant. And, there, and let me say this, God's using him because of that. If it ever becomes about an individual, then it's not about Jesus. And I want to challenge you tonight to be addicted to the ministry. Addicted to the ministry. You say, preacher, what about my family? Well, I believe God will, God will honor. I'm not talking about forsaking your family and forsaking, you know, your job and coming up to the church. and you know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about foolishness, but I'm saying this. Let church become more important than it was last week, this week. Let Bible reading be more important this week than it was last week. Let prayer take more precedent this week than it did last week. And you will slowly find your... Uh, anybody who's an addict will tell you, I never. it always started with one something. Is that right? They never sit there and take ten of them. It's always one. And then one turned into two, and two turned into ten. And There's a pattern of addiction. And let me say this. You don't just overnight get addicted to things that are going on around the church. It takes a little discipline to say, hey, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to go up there next week. I'm going to do this. And next thing you know, you've got to have that in your life. And it becomes a lifestyle of serving God. It becomes something that God... And you do it... By the way, you do all this not to... You do this one reason, because you love the Lord. Amen. We're doing what we're doing this even because we love the Lord. That's all we're here to do is love Him. Amen. And I thank God for the opportunity tonight. I don't know if I... We'll just have a word of prayer. And uh, uh, together, And if the, if the Lord's dealt with your heart, uh, I don't know if y'all typically do altar calls or not, but that's fine on Wednesday night. But I will say this. Maybe the Lord's dealt with your heart about something tonight, or maybe you're burdened about something. It is Wednesday night. I know you come in. Some of you come in right from work, and you got work tomorrow, and things are going. I understand. I really do. I understand all that. And so I want to pray for you tonight. And if you need to do a time of prayer, we'll uh, just maybe just play something over the speaker, do something like that, and just uh, take a moment. And uh, maybe there's something you need to get your heart right tonight with the Lord or somebody you want to pray for. Uh, we'll just all stand across the house, and we'll pray together here in just a moment. But if you just want to have a word of prayer before we leave, and again, thank you for being faithful tonight. It's good to see you, and we love you. I tried to be a little teachy tonight. I hope it wasn't too teachy. I know Brother Jesse is quite a preacher, and so it's hard to fill his shoes. But I want to try to be a help to the church tonight, and we appreciate it more. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for time together. God, we thank you, Lord, for midweek. God, I got saved on a Wednesday night. And I'm so thankful, God, for Wednesday night services. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would take the simple scattered thought maybe, Lord, for some, but Lord, a simple thought of just, we want to serve you more, we want to be, we want to have the ministry, Lord, be wanting something, Lord, that we long for, Lord, to do more, and serve you more, not for a name, not for notoriety, but God, because we love you, and Lord, help us tonight, Lord, as we in, the, in and out of this world, God, there's so many pulls from so many directions, help us tonight, Lord, to just yield our members, yield our bodies to you, God, and say yes to the Lord when you deal with our hearts and try to encourage one another. Lord, be that saint, Lord, that encourages other saints and we can be used of you. Lord, thank you for what you've done. Help us to get the gospel to a lost and dying sinner today, Lord, this week. Lord, thank you for what you do. Bless this church. Bless uh, the pastor. Thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, I believe you're at liberty to go tonight. Thank you for being faithful. And uh, God bless you.